two, one. Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Objective for a very special one year anniversary episode. And what a year it's been. Hold on, I'm getting flashbacks. Uh, this has been a fascinating journey so far. I'm sure there's a lot we can get into. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you in the chat room, in the uh, super chat especially. And even more than that, please consider becoming an Ayn Rand Center UK member so you can uh, continue the conversation uh, behind the scenes in our special uh, study groups, as well as uh, gaining exclusive content and helping this thing grow so we can uh, go for much longer. Um, let me uh, welcome... Uh, some of the people that, you know, really made this possible. It wasn't just me. Uh, first, we've got a guy who's sort of the founding member of the Daily Objective. He's uh, sort of been the long-standing resident intellectual of the Ayn Rand Center UK, although uh, the center has adopted uh, some very advanced level intellectuals since its founding. Please welcome a man whose name I have practiced pronouncing many times, Nikos Sotirakopoulos. Thanks, Raka. So, as I said many times, for people who know basketball, you are the Robert Horry of the Daily Objective. So, people who remember <laughs> Robert Horry was this stretch forward that he was the one ingredient that would fit the team together and he would score the clutch three point shots. So, thanks. Yeah. Um, I I'll could I'll... assign more roles to the rest of the group, but uh, it just came to me. So, yeah. Thanks. I've always seen myself more as a Dennis Rodman. But anyway, uh, we also got a guy who, you know, um, it's no it's no coincidence that ancient that the ancient civilization that gave us philosophy also invented the thespians. Please welcome actor, activist, philanthropist and actually YouTuber as well. He's got his own channel. Mark Pellegrino. What's up, Rucka? I would, I, would, I would agree with your assessment of Dennis Rodman. You control the boards. You're a great rebounder. You, you, uh, you control the ball for us. That's exactly what I was getting at. And uh, no time for Jonathan Honig today. We apologize. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> hey, John, just kidding. Hey, everybody. This is a guy who, you know, it still blows my mind that not only are, am I friends with this guy, but I get to work with him. He's a guy I used to watch on TV, <laughs> on, on Fox News, Fox Business. They'd have these, you know, eight person panels, everyone yelling over each other. And I think this guy actually might be the first human being I've ever seen, not in written form, but in spoken word media form, uh, speaking on behalf of capitalism, speaking for individualism, individual rights, basically relaying his understanding of objectivism and capitalism um, on TV. He is the first and one of the only. Uh, please welcome one of the greats. A guy who grew up, hold on, a guy who grew up on MTV. He was like a child star. He had it all going for him. And he could have just retired on that interest. But he said, no, I'm going to be a finance mogul. He went on to uh, create the capitalist pig, pig hedge fund. An obituary? <laughs> yeah. Sounds a little uh, like that. Luckily, not yet. Uh, please welcome a guy who has survived COVID. He has survived many recessions and probably the upcoming Great Depression. Please welcome Jonathan Honig. Thank you, Rucka. And you know, it's, it's fun for you to say that. And uh, it's been a, 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 a really meaningful long-term journey as a student of objectivism. And I'm so happy that we're celebrating the one year anniversary of the Daily Objective today, because part of, for me, what makes it so much fun is hanging out with you, Mark, Nikos, and our huge community. You know, the Super Chats are already flying in. Mary Lean, who I refer to as our fairy godmother, we put God in quotes around here, uh, 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 had a really generous super chat. Mary Aline, thank you, Mike, uh, for your super chat. Thank you, Jeff, for your super chat. And Emily, Emily asks, or excuse me, Robin asks, where's Rosie? And we're going to be getting into that too. But Christopher as well, you guys are all part of our community. You make it worthwhile. You teach us and we teach you. So it's a mutual win win relationship. So we're happy to be celebrating one year. And here's to, to many more in the future to come. Yeah. So um, we, I guess, uh, I guess let's, I guess uh, I'll sort of uh, put this out there. Like I'll talk about, I remember when Rosie called me up and asked if I wanted to do this show and to create this show. And I, I was I had a really hard time making any kind of commitment to something like that. I said, but because of the pandemic, because of the lockdowns 
And because I really kind of wanted something to do with myself, I said, you know what? Fine. Let's give it a go. Let's try it. And uh, because I was already waking up extra early and not exactly going out very much any time of day, certainly at night. And uh, with some of the, let's say, civil unrest taking place uh, right outside my window, uh, I was not exactly feeling inspired to leave the house maybe ever again. A lot to review over the past year, but uh, but that, you know, kind of that those lemons, I decided, yeah, let's make some lemonade and uh, started committing myself to do this show a couple times a week. And uh, it was Nikos. First, Nikos did the show with uh, Gloria Alvarez, episode one, then me and uh, Nikos. I remember episode two talked about some of the aforementioned civil unrest. And th so that's that was kind of uh, my uh, take on uh, my recollection of kind of when I first thought of doing the show and it was proposed to me and what made what made me decide to do it so maybe if some of you have any memories uh what made you uh, what were your thoughts about doing the show when you first considered it and what made you decide to say yes uh who wants to jump in how about nico since you're okay a so member? our first episode by the way i think it was one called the two americans and i haven't got in front of me so the first episode, by the way, was when I was in a quarantine in Athens because I had just flew in. And it was the intellectual environment was one that was the weirdest that I've ever experienced, perhaps in my life. So I come from a country where political violence is a thing. I thought that the worst it could get would be the 2018 with the Kavanaugh case and, uh, and all that polarization. But I think... The atmosphere at early June last year, it was the worst I've ever experienced because it was at the high of weird cancellation. So you remember it was a time when football players were getting kicked off their teams because their girlfriend or wife had liked or had posted something on Instagram about BLM. So there was a very suffocating atmosphere and we're trying to make sense of it. And I remember one episode, I think we, ha we had Don Watkins, but it wasn't a daily objective. It was... It was one of the meetup things. And where am I getting with that? The, what I get more personally for this is that it doesn't let me to go full tribal one way or the other, or it doesn't let me to go with emotionalism, which is something that I'm quite susceptible to. So I remember on that episode, Don was saying, look, okay, yeah, you are super angry with the cancellations, but... There's also an audience that you want to address. You're not only talking about to people who agree with you. So basically relax, see how you can build, you can bridge context and act accordingly. So quite often Raka has been playing this role, the role where when I go one way, he says, yeah, but keep in mind of this and this. So for me, it's also a good way to measure, let's say, my intellectual balance and uh, not go because particularly when you are with limited uh, social contacts as we're all were these last months i think this is very important also for us and the value that that we get in our intellectual development raz says the first episode was about the riots yes but the first episode was with gloria i was talking about the first episode with uh, with raka so, yeah, that's, the, that's how I remember the first uh, episodes. Uh, they were a bit awkward. Initially, I had the role more of the interviewer. I didn't enjoy them much, to be honest, and I don't like them in retrospect. They weren't great episodes. But I think through time, they became better. We got our... How it's called? It's like the team where they roll on the floor and you know where everyone is and it's, it rolls better. Yeah, uh, Jonathan and or Mark, do either one of you have any memories of when uh, you, you first thought were offered or you thought of joining the show and what were your thoughts and what made you decide to say yes? Mark, go ahead. Um, I don't remember specifically when Rozzy asked me to do it. Um, do, do you guys remember what show I came in on first? Nico's so we here. had you in one episode that was about Hollywood, but you were not a co-host, you were a guest. Ah. So Razi brought you on board. It had to be at some point late July, early August, but you didn't start immediately. But that's when, uh, that's when uh, you you came on board. I'm glad you remember my history for me, Nikos, because uh, I and I, I also have... found a, a basketball analogy. But finish, and then I'll go to it. Okay, good. So yeah, when Razi asked me, I was actually quite excited about it. I wasn't sure that I could fit it into my schedule because my schedule is so crazy. But because everything got delayed and and pushed around. I, I had plenty of time uh, and looked forward to 
communing with people of like mind and like spirit because you know you just don't get a lot of that in our culture so i'm really happy to be a part of a show like this you know we're, we're projecting objectivist values in the world we're we're discussing current events from an objectivist perspective and i hope bringing philosophy to the people you know and, and making it something that's not convoluted and crazy but something very accessible so i'm, I'm really happy to be a part of it and glad razi asked me Can so I say something that? about Jonathan, by the way, about uh, Mark beyond the basketball analogy? <clears throat> I, I think Mark is doing something which is very, unfortunately, uh, unusual in the objectivist community, which is he's acting also as an benevolently as an accelerator, you know, as a multiplier. He retweets, he shares, he suggests material. I don't remember who posted that. There was a meme which... It showed uh, this, the meme with the butterfly and says, uh, it said retweets and likes and an objective says, oh, is this altruism? So objectivist has this idea that if I have to share something, I have to agree 800% with it. And it has to be 800% the party line. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why I think objectivism in social media could be doing way better. But Mark has this generosity. He has this audience. And uh, I think we, I owe him a thank you because he has raised my quote profile which is of course nowhere where i want it to be but wherever it is he has raised it uh, a lot so uh, thank you mark <coughs> i'm glad to help uh, my friends especially my friends who have the same values as me thanks nikos i've seen your instagram your uh, what do they call it um catch or uh, thirst trap pictures of you working out Ooh, Nikos, that is raising your profile more than anything. Well, they're fucked. They're not thirst traps. So, <laughs> well, you know, I'll just piggyback a bit off something what Mark said about really finding a value in connecting. You know, in, from my perspective, Rand created the philosophy. I believe Dr. Peacock fleshed it out, if you will, again, my term. And organizations like the Ayn Rand Center, like the Prometheus. Foundation and like the Ayn Rand Center UK and the Ayn Rand Institute are helping to create this movement and connecting with like, like, like-minded people, cool people who, as you said, Nikos, don't always share everything, but share a lot of similar values. You know, for me, what I've really enjoyed about the show is, you know, and Rucka, you mentioned, you know, kind of my, my TV experience. Well, part of it was fun is, you know, having to go research. You know, we all refer to ourselves as students of objectivism. So there's so much to learn. So when Our Lord Emperor Razi says, you know, we're, today we're going to talk about this, talk about that. It's really fun for me to even take 15 or 20 minutes. And we encourage this for all of our, our viewers and our members too. You know, there's so much ran to get into. So like take 15 minutes, take 20 minutes. And because she covered so much of what we talk about every day, racism, monetary things. So, you know, we, she's covered all of it. So I really enjoy the opportunity to kind of go back and, and be that student looking stuff up. You know, we have, I'll say one more thing. We have contributions from literally all over the world. Bonnie, thank you for your contribution. Sammy is bored again. She's bored, but she's not bored here with the ARC UK. Thank you for your contribution. Jeff, you guys are all regular contributors. LMH, very generous, 20 pounds. You're part of our community. And I know I speak for, for the rest of the guys here and, and gals behind the scene that Uh, we love the worldliness of our effort here. We are a global community. You know, it's Ayn Rand Center UK, um, but we're a global community of students of objectivism and you all are a big part of it. So thanks for your membership, your super chat reports and for being part of us. You know, now we chat with Clubhouse with you. It's like, it's, and for me, it's really fun. It's really fun to see what, you know, Daniel says or Christopher says or Nikos, what you say, your perspective. I learned from it, I gained from it. So it's win-win all around. So here's also a moment of appreciation for Jonathan that it just came to, to my mind. So, and this applies also to Mark and Raga. So you all had already a bigger audience. So in a way you didn't quote need that. So Jonathan could say, look, I could be making uh, money in these 20 minutes. I've been on Fox News. But the fact that you spend this time, this tw- and it's not only 20 minutes because Jonathan always, you're very well prepared. You have uh, notes. So this is something I really appreciate. And uh, Again, we gain a lot of value from this. So thanks again, and thanks to all of you for because this applies to this applies to to basically all the co-hosts. I'll quickly button that up. And Jeff, thank you for your. Jeff says that it for his contribution. Jeff says it really feels like it's growing. I think he means objective is is growing because of you guys. Thanks. You know, we'll we'll take it. 
And, um, and I think we all have these unique superpowers, if you will. You know, Mark and, and you know, Nikos, I always say, I wish I had you when I was in college as a, as a professor. And, you know, Rucka, you're, you just got, and, and Rucka, I have to say, I've really come to appreciate your knowledge of objectivism. People who kind of just know you from your, your kind of, I don't know, your public face or whatever, like they might think that you're a little bit, I don't know, they don't really realize how much you know about <laughs> this philosophy. So I learned from you and I appreciate you sharing that gift as well. Thanks. That means a lot. I mean, your knowledge of finance to me or like is like uh, is a superpower from where I'm standing. So like from my perspective, you understand capitalism on levels that I am barely grappling with. So, uh, I mean, we all do come from completely different places. And, you know, speaking of like big audience, small audience, I actually like, um, you know, actually uh, uh, multiplied my female audience and my audience over age, you know, 30 times about three or four thousand since starting this show here with the audience that we have pulled in. So um, it's, you know, it's not, it's, it's not just about numbers. It's about, who, you know, who we're reaching. Uh, Zalmi T and Jeff both just sent over super chats. Jeff says with his Canadian dollars, uh, it really feels like it's gr like I'm like, it's growing because of you guys. Thanks. Maybe he meant to say he feels like he's growing. I'm not sure, but we're all growing. It's growing. Zalmi says 999. It's a little bit of an inside joke, a little Midwestern pizza commercial I got to voice uh, about 10 years ago or a little old, longer. Can uh, I also any, suggest to the audience, uh, maybe some, if you have suggestions, things that you think would uh, give more value, that would make you get more value from the show. So if you have ideas about uh, maybe things, something that we have missed or something that you particularly like or you don't particularly like, of course, we don't promise that we're going to take it on board. We have to also... Uh, council with the boss, but uh, you know your your views will be very important. Can we can we bring the boss in? I mean, he has teased our audience for weeks now with an appearance, the so-called Lord Emperor Razi Ginsburg behind the scenes, um, you know, controlling the media. Wink, wink. You know what I mean? Uh, Razi, show show yourself. Join us for a moment here because the audience was even calling for you. This is all your creation and. We want to, I think, as the panel, thank you for creating this and helping us be part of it and bringing it to the audience as well. All and right. I well, I figure, you know, if I'm wearing this T-shirt, I, I have to be on at least part of the show. Uh, but yeah, I, actually, so I, I will contribute to this show by telling some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I'll start with actually when, when the show started, which is, uh, or, or before the show started, when I suggested it to Nikos, and of course he dismissed it immediately as the worst idea he's ever heard in his life. Um, and it evolved from there to okay, let's do it for for two months. And then I think I think when we uh, had the first episode, Nikos posted on his social media, "We're doing this thing for the next two weeks." And I said to him, "No, I, it's not the next two weeks. It's forever." But we're just. Uh... I post. Sorry, I posted two weeks, and then I realized it's a misunderstanding of two months. So I thought, oh, "Okay, sorry, I got it wrong. It's not two weeks. Two months maximum." Yeah, but even the two months was just something I said to you to appease you, and and actually I knew it's 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 forever, and uh, yeah, and I well, mean... it's sorry, it's forever if we do a good work. It's uh, nothing is a given, you know. We have to, if it is to be forever, we have to to bring it on. To yes, keep bringing but it on. I mean, you mentioned that you didn't like the first episodes, and I, I think you know the first episode. If if the uh, the episodes a year into the show aren't better than the first episodes, then we're we're doing something wrong. So I think the first episodes were good for their purpose, uh, and I'm I'm happy with them. And uh, yeah, you know, the show the show has grown. Uh, when I, you know, when I when I contacted Raka about doing the show, I thought, okay, that's this is kind of a long shot of him agreeing to do this on a regular basis. <clears throat> but you know, I knew him. Uh, you know, we'd worked together before. We he was uh, in the UK. We we flew him over uh, for a week of events. So I thought there's some sort of a chance with uh, with Jonathan and Mark. Uh, I'm not going to go into too many details, but it, there was a day in August of last year where I thought everything was about to fall apart. And I thought, you know what? There's no chance of either of them saying yes, but it, it doesn't cost anything to try. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very happy that they both said yes and they're both 
still here, you know, even even though uh, things are opening up and Jonathan, you know, is is running from from Fox to uh, to to do this show and and Mark is running from the set and you know doing the show on the set and in his car. So yeah, I I really appreciate it. And of course, um, one thing that uh, you know one thing that we we always promote on the show is the the membership and. Um, we have grown from when we started this show around 20 members uh, to 110 today. And so many of these members, I keep hearing more and more of the stories of, you know, they, they heard of us because they were fans of Mark or they were fans of Jonathan, or, you know, we heard a few days ago, a story of somebody who uh, heard Raka on, on a, another podcast, then went to his channel. Then uh, he sent her to, to this channel and uh, and now she's a member. So uh, yeah, this this show, you know, is having its impact, and you guys are are bringing people in, and people are, you know, it's it is new people who are new to objectivism are, are coming in through this show. In case and isn't that you know, isn't that kind of it? We always say like, oh, how how to spread objectivism? How to spread objectivism? Like people see, I hope you know, interesting people of all different types of levels who are objectivists who identify as objectivists. You know. It's, it's a philosophy for living on earth, right? So succeeding and struggling and achieving values all in our own individual context. I, I think that's the best like sales tool, right? Is to see people loving life, you know, Craig Biddle talks about, and I, I'm all down with that, really embracing life, loving life and, and uh, helping, you know, having this help, uh, philosophy help you along. Yeah, and also quite often it's important not to get in the attitude of, oh, the world is so screwed up outside. And again, sometimes it's Raga who brings back this uh, perspective that, no, things are not so bad. So I remember particularly a couple of episodes when I'm in Greece and the travel restrictions are getting worse. And I'm like, oh, it's East Germany and all that stuff. So it's it's good that uh, we get also this uh, this point of view that says that, no, it's about... Yeah, okay, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to give up and become a complainer and say, oh, the world is destroying me? Oh. No, it's, 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 you, you still try to pursue your values. And uh, yeah, talking about also good values, uh, shall we? Okay, by the way, Razi, if you finished, at some point I want to mention some of my favorite episodes, and, but also uh, I don't want to interrupt you, so continue. Uh, no, you can you can go ahead. I'm I'm basically now sticking around on camera just to see if somebody in the uh, chat comments about this beautiful T-shirt I'm wearing. But, so yeah. where did you get that T-shirt from, and how can I buy such a T-shirt as well if I uh, want? So as of now, the the shop is is basically we've only advertised it to members, but it, it is coming to the general public soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. Well, uh, ask you, how much do I have to donate for you not to offer that for sale? <laughs> The people want to wear this T-shirt, Jonathan. So you know, don't deprive them of that. Mm -hmm. well, well, I'll just say part of what I think is great of what you do, Razi, and what our membership helps support is all types of media. You know, um, in the in the chat, um, Shadowblade said he's sorry for insulting your own. He didn't mean that he is depressing. His shows are very serious, and my comment was, I just think it's great because there's so much quote objectivist media out there now there's and, and Razi you're really at the forefront of this and people on Facebook and I are talking about it you've got kind of serious stuff with Don really helpful useful productive stuff that Nikos is involved with really like straight up learning about objectivism with Andy Bernstein the daily objective so you know you're creating a whole media kind of empire here uh, with students of objectivism learning from the audience giving education to the audience it's a virtuous cycle that you know you've created that we're all part of the audience as well so hats off once to you as, as well and even in spanish now in espanol there's a there's a spanish show on on the iron center uk thanks jonathan yeah, yeah there's a spanish show on radio ragnar um sundays at 10. we could just get a show for whatever language that nico speaks you know we'll really be in business well <laughs> and the, but the thing with raz is that he has very high visions and uh, so you've seen some big names. You should have seen the big names that did not say yes, but were invited in events. So Razin is never shy of inviting uh, big names, even outside of objectives. Hopefully you're going to see some of them in the following weeks. 
And uh, he has this vision. He wants this to be uh, the young Turks, although I don't know what the young Turks are, the, the media thing where you have, I know, let's say, the, the how it's called, the, the daily wire of objectives. And there are various shows at different levels. And again, when I first heard Raz saying that, I was like, okay, yeah, that's uh, never... But he believes it. He's trying uh, to do it. So let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Shadowblade, for that super chat. And don't, you know, don't don't be in your in your head about this, as they say. Uh, you know, we 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 know you didn't mean to insult your on. And believe me, he, he doesn't care. I think I can say that with confidence. <laughs> um, and that's what I like about him. And we've got a lot of admirable people in our sort of outer inner and outer circle, people that are just focused on the job and they don't have time to. Uh, to, you know, to sort of take things personally, unless if it's unnecessary. Um, Mary Lean, another admirable person, sends over another $5. She says, I learn a lot here. I love you guys. Also, donations help me not spend money on clothes I don't need. And she passes the savings on to us. Uh, that's great. I always say that money's burning a hole in your pocket. It's a bad idea to keep it. Just send it over. Jonathan yeah, now with inflation, another reason to... Yeah, it's yeah. it's bad idea. Jonathan says $19.99 sends over. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff with the $5 Canadian says, do you have a pant tint on your image, Jonathan? Well, I've, I have uh, licensed it to the Iran Center UK, but now given that shirt, I'm thinking of turning around and filing a suit. Uh, because uh, no, look, it, it, part of what's fun about, I think what we do is can we make objectivism, hopefully a little bit more accessible. You know, I think when people are first getting into it, it's kind of like, oh, metaphysics, epistemology, this all seems kind of like hard and confusing. And, you know, we're just all kind of normal people living our lives, hopefully laughing along the way. So, you know, I love it. The fact that we can make maybe objectivism or a run center UK a little bit more commercially interesting and memeable if you will i mean i think it's i think it's a great way to go and and the community responds in kind so we're happy because actually we're not making objectivism whatever we're making we're making basically fourth people who try to apply that philosophy the, up to the point they understand it in their lives and how this can help us view these things so personally for example it has helped me not being a tribalist not being, uh, it has helped me in my personal life in various ways. So maybe we try to communicate a bit how this is, uh, how this has affected our lives, but also to communicate things that we find interesting. And the fact that people find them interesting is, I'm really glad. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, let me just okay. uh, answer Mary Lean's question and then I will uh, leave you guys to it. Mary Lean says that, uh, well, it's not a question. She, she, she says she doesn't get the t shirt. So, uh, I mean, this is opening up a whole... Yeah, you have more. to come closer to the camera for people to get the t-shirt. Well, uh, no, they can find it on our shop when we, uh, you know, but but the... the um, so this is going to open up a can of worms, but uh, in, in 2016, Jonathan uh, went on Neil Cavuto on Fox News and explained his case against voting for Trump and uh, finished it with one of the greatest uh, moments in the history of Fox News, I think. Uh, uh, by tearing open his shirt and revealing a Hillary 2016 t-shirt. So uh, yeah, this is in reference to that. And maybe, maybe we should post that video more often so people get it when we, when we start the, selling The, the this. best thing about it being 2021 now is that we don't have to talk about Trump <clears throat> anymore, right? We are, um, thank you, Rose Richards. Rose says it's her first donation. Keep it up, guys, and we will. On politics, yeah. on epistemology, on all elements of living a fruitful, productive life. And Shadow Blade for the uh, two pounds slash euros saying briefly, what do you think of the G7 tax? Uh, I don't like it because it's got the word tax in it. Can we stick to the subject for now and try to get to that uh, later on? Is that okay with, with everybody? Uh, oh, we'll get to that's, that's make it easier for us to find uh, our next uh, episode. Uh, there the you G7 go. G7 tax, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we'll have an episode about it, hopefully without me. Um, now, Nikos, you've uh, you've credited me here uh, today for uh, uh, kind of reminding you at times that it's not as bad as you as you think. And I say, look at reality, actually open your eyes and look at the facts. You've got the Internet, you've got technology all around you, you've got deliveries, you've got basic freedom. Yes, they said, don't leave the house. I know it's really bad where you've been living in terms of letting us know you're in ho your hotel like a worried grandmother. But still, <laughs> all things considered. It's nothing like communism. It's not on the same scale as 
a police state where they torture you to death. It's basically basically still a free country in an emergency situation the way that I see it. Uh, so similarly on these sort of um, uh, State of the Union episodes we do, I, I try to uh, veer us towards concretes rather than kind of patting ourselves on the back about what we do in the abstract, like how much, uh, you know, what a wonderful uh, thing we're doing conceptually. I like to talk about concretes. Concretely, we were doing this on Facebook early on. Only the true fans remember that. We were on Facebook broadcasting there. That was uh, where this show was first live streaming. And then we were having so much technical difficulties that one day we decided, you know what, let's just live stream on YouTube today. And I was very in encouraging of that. So even though uh, it was getting much less live viewers, it was literally like you could count the viewership with one hand some, some of those early days of how many people were watching live on YouTube. But I said, I believe in this decision. We're sticking with YouTube right now as I speak. We've got 53 live viewers. That's nothing to sneeze at. Sometimes it's gotten higher. And that's, you know, that's, that's solid. Remind, remember everyone to leave a like on the video. So, you know, we, we, we were willing to uh, grow it. We we're willing to grow it on YouTube. And today, this is a vibrant YouTube channel. This is a vibrant YouTube show. We've got active engagement. We've got super chats. And we've got, um, we've got life. We've got life. So, and we've, uh, even broken, we've even broken news, you know, the Ayn Rand Center UK, speaking of Trump, uh, you know, kind of broke news that Dr. Peikoff was supporting Trump in the 2016 election, which, you know, made news all around. Voting, the voting for Trump. Voting for voting. You're right. Sorry, voting. voting. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting... Uh, well, you're getting he also support. sent money to the campaign, so it wasn't only voting. But I guess anyway. that is support, yeah. Uh, but although this was during the time of the Democrat debate. So anyone who watched those debates probably was praying for Trump to, or anyone <laughs> other than the Democrats. Anyway, by the way, it's interesting how. The, you know, there's this there's this caricature objectivists agree on everything. The fact that we were not on each other's throat around the election and around the 6th of January when everyone, I, maybe not everyone, I was pissed off basically with men in the community because I thought they were not seeing the things I see. But again, the fact that we survived the, that period and we said, okay, again, don't go with emotion, don't go with uh, what, don't be a tribalist, which is ironic because supposedly I'm right, I wrote a book about uh, tribalism, but I was, it was so easy at that time to go with the tribalist sentiment. And again, this space, so to speak, to use the postmodernist lingo, was a, was a, a stop from going full down that uh, that path. Yeah, uh, people in the chat, by the way, love the um, the moment when the my video froze and Mark was started laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> um, do any of you have any favorite moments of the past year, <laughs> or is that everyone's favorite moment? I watched that moment? video on when it was prepared for highlight because I think someone who was like, shall we put this out or not? And it was one of the <coughs> last, w one of the times where I remember having a nervous laughter. Like it's... <laughs> well, yeah. That was great. EJ, EJ, for your uh, contribution, <coughs> chat. and you know, even if it's a dollar or two dollars or five pounds, you know, it really goes a long way in terms of keeping the lights on and uh, in terms of emotional support, kind of a pat on the back for all of us here. I'll say, you know, I've learned a lot about, I've enjoyed hearing about all your different stories, you know, kind of histories and journeys and objectivism. You know, Rucky, you've talked a lot about some of your experiences. You know, Nikos, the fact that you were like a card carrying commie basically a decade ago. Is that, I mean, roughly? Yeah, yeah, a decade ago. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, it's inspiring to me. It's inspiring, I think, to our, our viewership and our audience. Quickly, you said, what's some of my favorite moments? My favorite moments are, are happening now. I love what the Ayn Rand Center UK is doing with Harry Binswanger. You know, Dr. Binswanger knew Ayn Rand, worked with her on a book. He's an amazing fountain of knowledge, truly. So here at ARC UK, we're like literally hooking you up. You can talk to Dr. Binswanger, ask him a question, interface with him. So to me, that's what I'm loving. It's new, it's fresh, it's about objectivism, and it's only here with the Ayn Rand Center UK. Yeah. Um, well, if those are all the memories people have, I guess I'll, I'll just mention, uh, speaking of Trump and, uh, and all of that, like um, I sort of had like kind of like an epiphany in real time on the show, like the morning after the, um, 
the, the morning after election day in America. So like kind of the morning after that, I woke up and when I went to sleep, it looked like Trump was winning and Trump even announced we're going to sue to get, to, to get them to stop counting votes. Then I woke up in the morning, saw Biden uh, with a lot of the uh, mail-in ballots was winning and that uh, Republicans all over Twitter were saying, this is fraud, this is fraud, this is fraud. And I kind of realized in real time on the show uh, and that like, Method is everything. Epistemology is everything. At the end of the day, it's 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 indispensable. If you if you don't have a uh, proper way of attaining knowledge, then there's no telling where you're going to end up. And irrationality is uh, is going, you know, is coming. It's it's impending. So um, I kind of realized on the show in real time that why philosophy matters so much. It's not primarily about politics. It's about how we attain knowledge and how we go about all of that. So. Um, that was a real, a really uh, important moment in my intellectual sort of history. And we got to have it. I got to have it here uh, on the air that day. I think it's part of what makes this fun is that we, we create a community. I think when coming into objectivism, people feel like they have to be experts right away and be spokesmen. And, you know, Rand, I believe, encouraged people to refer to themselves as students of objectivism. And we all are, you know, we're learning along the way. And I think that's part of what, you know, we've hopefully we've created a, a safe environment to ask questions, to, uh, to, to, to learn that, you know, safe environment and, you know, in a positive way, in a sense that, you know, we're all students uh, enjoying the ride. And that's yeah. what allows us to do all this uh, experimentation uh, in a way that, again, we don't claim to be, Experts, and by the way, why is it important that we don't do this? Because we are not bullshitting uh, people and we respect the people who think, who we judge that they are. So you mentioned you mentioned Harry Binswager. Uh, reading the Harry Binswager letter during the pandemic was a real life lesson in what it means to apply philosophy. So the way he spotted, for example, everything that was wrong in the way the media treated it, not the hyperbole, this, this is easy to see. But for example, he's putting, why are you not asking the right questions? So he, he goes to he goes deep with that. So for example, why, why, why isn't anyone talking about how many tests we do compared to how many cases we have? Now, in, uh, in, in June 2021, this is obvious. Harry was talking about it from March 2020. And at some point, at some point he said, uh, at some point he said, I predict that from April things are gonna. And it wasn't prediction from his head. It was, oh, the way I see things and the way things are going, this is a safe prediction. And it was, it was again, as if seeing what it, as if seeing an expert doing something, and you get joy by seeing this. You get this aura of expertise, but also you get value out of, uh, you get value out of it. So, which is a good way to remind people that today we have the third episode of HBTV. Harry's gonna talk about why. The point is not give up, uh, give back to society. The point is give back to the rich. Controversial statement, <clears throat> but we're gonna see what he means. Anything else, gentlemen? Um. Oh, Robert with 1776 says Amy, his wife. Amy and I have been honored to be part of the ARC UK family, and it's been great fun playing our small part on YouTube and Clubhouse. Kudos to all of the TDO hosts, and extra props to Razi. Jeff adds with $5 Canadian, I come here to learn uh, how to frame my arguments better by listening to the pros. That's nice of you to say. Uh, CJ with $2 Canadian says, <clears throat> for the Jonathan Honig bookcase fund. Yes, uh, that's definitely, uh, we're going to need more than $2 Canadian for that, with all due respect to the Canadian uh, currency. Um, yeah, you know, it's been, uh, you know, it's been a great year. Uh, I've definitely learned a lot uh, by talking to you guys, by uh, thinking about the topics, by having these topics sort of thrown upon me. You know, in, in improvisation, you know, we say, give us a word, any word. Someone throws up a word and then that becomes the starting point, the launch pad of the whole show or the whole scene. And uh, some days that's been the topic of the episode has been thrown at me and I was willing to rise to the occasion. Uh, and, you remember uh, one episode where we threw you a word and you thought it was something else. So for the first two minutes we we're talking about, I don't remember what episode it was. 
I'm not sure, but it anyway, sounds was... like something that happened. Maybe, maybe I, I still don't know that it was the wrong word, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not remembering this. Uh, it's been fascinating. Uh, like I said, I was in a dark place with the whole uh, civil unrest happening when the show started. A lot of those memories are coming up now that I'm thinking back to that time. But, um, you know, here we are a year later. Um, we've, we've, t- we've made the best of the whole pandemic situation. We've, uh, we've taken opportunities. Uh, we've grown. This has helped not only the Ayn Rand Center UK, but I think the objectivists on the Internet maybe have been inspired. And, and um, you know, Yaron Brook just debated a guy named Vouch, who is a nasty, Vouch is, that is, a nasty either former member of Antifa or he's hinted that he's been involved in shenanigans with violence and like just a disgusting nihilistic uh, Zoomer uh, on the internet who, who just like, you can watch his debate with Iran. He calls Iran a bootlicker. Like it's just, just, just so ugly inside and out. And, um, and it's very satisfying to see our guy, so to speak, go up, finally just answer the guy <clears throat> after seeing the guy just basically go unchallenged in any fundamental way for the last several years. So um, the world is changing bit by bit. We, we can't see it right now. We can't see uh, how it's changing, but these, uh, you know, the, the way that this sort of uh, internet scene is growing and, and getting more active and busy, it's, uh, it's going to have an effect because uh, uh, truth is the best disinfectant, I like to say. You know where you can find Yaron having debates with people from different views that are not nihilistic uh, and uh, whatever that guy was? I'm on UK every Tuesday. Right here. Seven o'clock. Yes. So tomorrow is a discussion with... Uh, Greg Scorzo, who is someone I know, he's a very interesting uh, person. He's for the welfare state. So there's going to be a discussion with Yaron on the welfare state. How do these things happen? These things happen because you support us, not only morally, but also materially, because these things cost. So thanks for supporting. Keep supporting. Consider becoming a member. Maybe consider giving a bit more if you if you can afford it. And we're going to be... We're going to, quote, give back with better content, most more hours of our lives. Again, this takes a lot of our time because we want to prepare. We don't want to, to cut. We want whatever we give you to be of value, basically. That's, that's the point. So that's why we take this very seriously. Whether we have five viewers or we have uh, 500 or 5,000 viewers, we respect these viewers in the same way. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Anything yeah. else, gentlemen? Uh, thank you all for uh, watching this. Uh, it, it, ha- it really uh, is amazing. Like I said in one of our recent uh, uh, State of the Union episodes, whatever it was, episode 200 maybe, I said, you know, this thing is ultimately, quote, bigger than us. Let's say one of us at some point needs to leave because of work, time, conf- time conflict or, or a new host joins us at some point. It's, it's conceivable, but like this show, I hope to see continue. Uh, indefinitely, because uh, who knows, maybe some of us are going to have kids one day who will end up hosting this thing. You, you, this thing is, uh, is, is, has a life of its own, so to speak. I hope, to, I hope and I hope uh, Ayn Rand Century UK continues to, uh, you know, uh, do the types of stuff that it's done. Um, that's really all I have to say. Um, if any of you has any uh, thoughts, feel no, free. No, a big thank you to all of you. A big thank you to Razi and a big thank you to our viewers. And we're going to be even better and we're going to take this even more seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for your super chat. And now let's take it all to, Club to Clubhouse and talk to, uh, talk to some of our community. We want to know what you think. Uh, join us on stage. Tell us you completely disagree with all of this. You think we've, it's been, been a disaster. Your opinion counts on Clubhouse, that is. Uh, see you there. Thanks for all the super chats. Please consider uh, joining as a member. And with that, uh, please uh, remember, set your alarm. Thank you, CJ, for the last minute super chat, he, albeit Canadian. He says, have you seen that gross growth on Vouch's ear? I, I mean, I try to avoid, I try to focus on the positive. You know, the, the, the non-essentials are uh, things I like to avoid. But anyway, I mean, and by the way, the point I was making with all of that is like, you know, we're seeing ARI do a weekly podcast. I'm not saying we, we, we directly inspired that, but it's, we're, we're seeing a, a movement grow. We're seeing a, a TOS doing a continuous live streams and podcasts. I mean, th- this whole thing is growing. And I like to think Razi's uh, leadership on the Internet has, uh, has helped uh, create sort of a, a can-do spirit. Um, yeah, and know something, people. Razi, 
all the day. And I would say even when he sleeps, he, he thinks about the ARC UK. So I've had calls from Razi when he's out drinking and let's say having a good time where he stops his drinking to, to call me, to tell me something random about something about the center. And this has happened. I won't say it has happened many times. I will say there are very few times that it has not happened. So yeah, this guy takes this very seriously. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, he needs, uh, he deserves uh, the support and the love. That's right, everybody. Uh, support us now by going over to Clubhouse. And remember, back here in uh, 11 or 12, is it the bottom of this hour or is it at One noon? hour and 15 minutes from now. Okay. One and hour and 15 in, minutes from in, now. At 9 p.m. UK time or eight. sorry, 8 p.m. UK time. Sorry, guys, I'm bad with time zones. But coming up in one hour and 14 minutes from right now on the Ayn Rand Center UK, it's another episode of HBTV, Harry Binswanger Television. Guys, we don't deserve some of this content we're getting around here. I mean, weekly debates between Iran and others. We got uh, uh, study groups with Don Watkins and James Valiant and, of course, HBTV. Um, I, I mean, the real topic of the episode to, today should be, what, do I do, what did I do to even uh, be worthy of, of hanging, hanging out with some of these folks? Anyway, jumping over to Clubhouse now. Stay tuned for more content in an hour and 15 minutes. And of course, back here, same time tomorrow for the daily objective. What'll the topic be? I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>